Hello, welcome to another episode of Agile Actually. My name is Simon Rindel, professional scrum trainer, agile coach, entrepreneur, author. Uh, with me is my friend and colleague, Martin Hinshelwood. Hello, Martin. How are you doing? Hey, Simon. How's it going? Also professional scrum trainer, Kanban trainer, entrepreneur, coach, MVP of Microsoft. Uh, yeah. Yep. And all, all around good chap. Mostly. Mostly. Okay, you're human, right? We all have yeah. foibles. All right, moving swiftly on. Uh, this episode, we were thinking about stuff that was going down in the world, and we thought it would be interesting to discuss ethics and agility. Mm. Uh, ethics being a moral principle of doing the right thing, so the understanding the difference between right and wrong and acting on it mm -hmm. and agility being the whole movement, like all of it, where frameworks, whatever, the industry that is become agile, helping organizations deliver better value more quickly. Is it possible for an organization to be agile and unethical? Mm -hmm. Have there ever been examples of organizations behaving in an unethical way? Hmm. Are there consequences to organizations doing that? Um, discuss. Um, what's your thoughts, Martin? I I think it's a very um, I think it's a very gnarly issue because there are loads of things that people believe to be ethical that aren't, or maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong in the way I'm phrasing that. Maybe there are just lots of people who don't understand ethics. That's possibly, oh, okay. possibly, possibly what it could be. Because I, I think there's, there's doing things unethically and not understanding that you're being unethical. And then there's deliberately doing something unethical that you know is unethical. Okay. So we've got conscious and unconscious ethical behavior. Yeah. I'd also like to call out that you use the term gnarly in the context of complex as opposed to gnarly as in cool. Um, oh, I did not know I had another. I was thinking no, 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 gnarly in um, certain uh, subcultures means really cool. Okay. Was not aware of that. That's yeah. the age thing. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, I think I'm older than you. So, yeah, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> All right. So do you think most businesses operate with a moral compass? Oh, not sure. I like that word most. Well, I'm, I'm putting some, uh, yeah. well, should, do you want me to rattle through the businesses that have at one time or another executed a poor or ambiguous moral choice that I'm aware of? Sure. I could probably, maybe I could add to that list or maybe I'm just thinking of the same companies as you are. Yeah, okay. Um, so Ford with their Pinto release, they consciously released a car that would probably cause deaths. Um, uh, curious the Ford, enough. Um, the Ford Mondeo pulled to the left under heavy braking. Uh, Renault with the bonnet catch that would fly up. Okay. Um, how about Exxon? All right, we really want to, like, this, this will get, Everybody uh, running for covers, a uh, really dangerous one. Exxon had evidence that the oil industry would cause climate change in 1970 and paid to suppress the information and discredit the information. Yep. Uh, so there, I, yep. There, there is climate change. Exxon, one of the biggest oil companies, knew about it, actionably invested in misinformation around it. Yep, I'm pretty sure the tobacco companies can be put on that list as well for the same same style of action. Yeah, at a, at a certain point, they became aware that smoking wasn't so good for you, right? Yep, gone were the adverts that dentists put out that smoking was good for you and doctors that helped you with your asthma, right? Um, how about this? Um, diabetes and sugar addiction kills three times more people than smoking in America. And it's heavily regulated in a way that promotes it. Mm. Corn syrup is 
in everything. Everything um, in the US. Everything. everything. Yeah. Um, what about uh, Zoom's changing of its uh, user policy that if you continue to use Zoom, you agree for it to sample some of your uh, data? Yeah. Right. That was the the, the, the the update was that um, they would be able to consume all of use, have their AI consume all of that content to learn off your, your conscience. Interesting. Oh, here's, here's a, here's a personal beef of mine. I got auto banned from playing call of duty by installing a new mouse. So Activision have banned my profile from playing Call of Duty because I installed Logitech Suite of G Sync and it's on a banned list. And so my my account got banned, which means I'm not able to use a product for not not for cheating, but Logitech uh, Activision don't tell you that you can't use that or Corsair's IQ or a couple of other things and their known false positives. But because they're yeah. making so much money, they're not adopting their ricochet system and they just auto ban people. It's it's a thing. Is that ethical? Take someone's money and then ban them? Yep. That's bad. Um, so what I'm about, brave. Um, what about Boeing? What about Boeing? Uh Boeing um deliberately made a business choice to focus on shipping rather than quality are you talking about the 737 max 737 max is definitely okay. a good example okay. of that. so um, allegedly allegedly we have to use that term otherwise we'll be bankrupt um i this is a i'm, I'm very keen on aviation um the I think the ethical challenge is Boeing very much knew the behaviors of the 737 MAX and they made a particular feature optional and didn't educate about it. And you'll find the airlines that suffered those crashes did not educate their air crew properly on the operation of the equipment. Uh, yes, however, they were not told that there was a change no. to the operation of the equipment. Um, yeah. Allegedly. So, yeah, there, there's there's... It's it's dubious ground, right? Yep. So yep. Absolutely. Do, do you launch a product that is potentially dangerous? Well, we don't have all the facts, so um, the Activision one I know is true, and you can't see me because you've done it to me. <laughs> That's personal. <laughs> I didn't cheat. You banned me. What's wrong? Um, yeah. What about Meta? Um, Meta's harvesting of data from since they bought WhatsApp. And- uh- well, also Profiling. harvesting of data into Cambridge Analytics as well, right? Well, that's well, that's proven, right? Because they paid the fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, let's stop before we end up being Sweet. in some yeah big trouble. So that that's stuff that we know about that we're picking up from papers or personal experience. It's very easy for companies, either consciously or unconsciously to behave in a pretty shoddy way. Do you think they intended to do all this stuff or is it some curious happenstance rush to go to live? I think it, I think it depends from which which perspective you look at it. I, I, I do believe in all of those circumstances that we've talked about. If there was indeed wrongdoing that takes care of our allegedly, right? If there was indeed wrongdoing, somebody knew about it. Somebody understood the problem and the ramifications and either chose not to act or chose to act in a way that had that negative outcome, right? What would drive that motivation? I'm I'm trying to lean here into the the whole curiosity with positive intent because I don't think anybody gets out of, well, the majority of people don't get out of bed to just kind of break the world, right? You're, you're turning up to work to do your thing. And we're talking about major corporations. We're not talking about, you know, organized crime or anything, because obviously <laughs> there's, there's, there's real intent there to harm people, um, just make loads of money. Um, so with these major corporations, what could possibly 
influence somebody to make a decision like that? What what would drive them? People tend to behave how they're measured, right? So if somebody is under significant pressure to deliver something, they may cut corners. Um, they may falsify data. There's been a number of cases, especially in the medical world, where data on the 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 the, the ramifications of of drugs, either um, sweeping side effects under the carpet or um, making a drug look like it works when it doesn't, by fudging the data, in because people are put under a lot of pressure to deliver something. Yeah, yeah. So it's what I'm hearing is that it's a financial imperative, right? Because medicines in particular are horrendously expensive to come up with a new one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. and that, that pressure to deliver, that's, that's what got um, Cyberpunk 277, right? Did you hear uh, about that game? Yeah, yeah the game uh, that had that, that um, issue. So there's an interesting example with Cyberpunk 277, perhaps not ethical, but an example of releasing a product too early because yeah. of that, that financial imperative. And there's documented yeah. evidence on YouTube of developers showing what the flaws were. Product were desperate to hit a particular release date. And it, it didn't, it wasn't working soon. Well, sometimes there's a lot of money on the line. Right, that that they're going to start losing a lot of money if they aren't able to actually release the product, um, and those ramifications put people under a lot of pressure. Um, I imagine, for example, example that was the the driving factor for Zoom at the start of the pandemic, right, where yep. they they deliberately made. I don't know if I have to say allegedly for that one, allegedly made changes in the product in order to increase the stability and scalability of the product, but reduce users' security um, and not to tell users and to actively, um, I don't know how to describe it. What is it when you create a situation where it looks like it's doing the thing, but it's not doing the thing? Masking. Masking, masking the fact that they, they had done it. Um, yeah. Some the the end-to-end -end encryption and you still had the green light, even though they turned the encryption service on off behind the scenes in order to support more users. Because I think for encryption, you lose about 40% of your performance right. um, with encryption on. So that gave them that boost. But instead of making it transparent and clear uh, to the users that that's what they were doing, you know, and for the reason, right? Um, it was kind of well hidden, um, which is unethical. Okay. Um, is it possible to work in a professional, agile way and be unethical? I don't remember reading anything in the Agile Manifesto that guarantees ethics. It focuses largely on teams collaborating and delivering value to the customer. So defining your market segment, uh, your target audience and your customer could allow some ambiguous behavior and you could apply all the principles of the agile manifesto in an unethical industry. So let's push it to the extreme. Um, fishing centers, they're huge, right? There's organizations around the world that, um, massively target phishing emails, phishing texts, you know, the WhatsApp yep. scams, the, um, they, they blanket hundreds of millions, billions of people, and they need a very low bite rate to actually make themselves profitable. That's, that's how the crime works. Yep. Yep. Um, they're amazingly responsive, right? 
every time <laughs> you know they 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 in yeah they're 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 it, iterating almost on real time on the, the 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 copy the opens the links the security people are uh, uh, blocking their stuff and they're continuously iterating i don't know how many emails i get with fake remittance advice or yep. uh, as a company right you get fake remittance advice you get all, all these things that some of them look like legitimate emails, like somebody just asking you a question. But even if they're just fishing for you to click a link and validate that the email is actually a real email, it's still a phishing attempt, right? Yeah, yeah. And then there's uh, your Amazon account's going to be closed is the latest one that's hitting my inbox. Yep. Um, uh, your security software subscriptions out of date um yep. you know your and, bank... and you, could, you could send that out for your 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 microsoft security subscription and you're going to hit a large body of people who who are like well, that could be me right yeah yeah yeah. And you just need that little bit of uncertainty so your billing has expired yeah yeah you're going to lose everything um so what we're saying is that you can apply the product aspects of agility in any context at all and so it really is up to you driving the product process to choose to act in an ethical way or not and i know yeah. in the in the psm course for instance we explore an, an ethical issue where you misrepresent what can be done at a certain amount of time yeah yep um which is ethical and we tease that out in the PSM3 assessment as well. So that need for uh, awareness of ethical behaviors there, but there's nothing in the, the guidebooks, the frameworks, the rules of Agile that says you need to do, do good for the world, right? Well, sure. And I think it, it's, it's definitely interesting. So I have um, my, my MVP my Microsoft most valuable professional comes with an ethics guide. Like uh, uh, you, you agree to comply by these these epics as part of this this award. Um, but I think I, I do remember I do remember a time uh, ma many many years ago. I think I was on the job. Maybe was it my second second gig? 2001, 2002, around that time. And I was working for, uh, this shows my age, it was a new media agency, right? Before, uh, just after the dot-com bubble burst. Um, and I was asked, I had, uh, um, so I was probably 22, and I was asked to um, create an application that took in a list of uh, first name, surname, and company, um, and generated, guessed what their email might be based on com common company formats, sure. um, and then emailed those emails with a, you know, in those days you could really do the opened, right, because there wasn't so much security around it, um, to, to, to find people's email addresses. I was, that's one of the things I was asked to do um, at the company I was at. And Did you do it? No, I ref I refused to do it. Absolutely, abjectly refused to do it. And I kind of I I I I lied about why I didn't want to do it. So I didn't want to do it because I thought it was unethical. That's why I didn't want to do it. But at twenty two, I don't think I had the balls to say I don't want to do this because it's unethical. Yeah. Because if I say that. It implies that I think the other person's being unethical, right? Yeah, so that could be an, call, right? Yeah, that could that could be that could be an accusation, and it was the the sales director that was asking me to do it. But what I did say, which I guess kind of didn't really get around that, but um, I I think I was a BCS member, British Computer Society. Yeah, member, yeah, yeah. And the British Computer Society also comes with a with an ethics. Ethics yes. guide. I think my membership had expired at this point, right? But I claimed that 
my 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 contract my membership of the bcs was based on compliance with a set of rules and i said that this this would break that set of rules so i wouldn't be able to do it um so that's a really good practical tip is regardless of your organization like if if you're a uh, a computer person is there a computer organization like the british computer society that has that code of ethics i know as professional scrum trainers we've got a code of ethics as an mvp yep. you've got the code of ethics if you do any coaching training there's coaching ethics from the icf if you do facilitation stuff there's ethics there is whatever your profession is there will probably be a professional body that can offer you a code of conduct to help you negotiate your way through the moral maze. Yeah, because I, I, not everybody. I'm just I'm I'm thinking that's why I paused. <laughs> not 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 everybody has the same ethical boundaries. I think. Well, it's, there's there's some there's some grounds that is very personal, right? And we see that. Um, yes being played out in society that you uh there's very strong issues that, that generate really really strong response and some of it's supported by the media some of sure it's, yeah. but some of it's just just some of the some of it's supported by by other things that people ascribe to that they feel that other some things are encroaching we're trying to avoid saying you know religion and various bits and bobs right but yeah, it's there, so there are things that are antagonistic what's societal yeah. norm versus my group norms and how, how how do they mush together and what do i what what do i follow and what do i try and impose upon others right so because personal that, personal mores personal beliefs right yeah um yeah. However, and, they come about, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's like how do how do you? Well, it's up to you how you balance that. Um, obviously, you'll make a choice when you join and work for certain corporations that work with certain industries. Um, I know some people would choose not to work with tobacco, for sure. instance, uh, energy companies, um, defense manufacturers, other things like that. Like, there's the people will say, no, I'm not going to go and work yeah. with them. Gambling is another one. So some people... Uh, some people won't, won't work with, with gambling companies. Uh, cannabis companies in the States struggle uh, with their cash flow because they're, many of the credit card companies, many of the banks won't, because it's federally, I think it was, I don't know if it is just now, but last time I was exploring those ethical ideas, or at least I sell them in the news, it was federally illegal. So none of the federal banks would touch it, but state-based it was legal, but the banks have to operate across federal boundaries and they had all, they, they, they couldn't, they couldn't. So they had all this cash on premises. So they were getting robbed, right? Because everybody knew, oh, they've got all this cash and they can't, because they can't take cards. So it has to be cash. And then they can't go put it in the bank because their business can't do that. So they've got all this cash on the premises and they're getting robbed. So it's, that's almost they're doing it for ethical reasons their their own personal ethical reasons and causing an unethical situation which is yeah it's the the curious conundrum you get when you have you know legal juxtaposition but that's you know let's not go into <laughs> yeah that's um, yeah don't don't yeah we're not going to go dancing down that rat hole um um so we can be ethical how we behave we can behave towards each other ethically and be working yep. on a product that is arguably unethical by someone else's standards there are some grounds that some people would argue that for instance working in a fishing company uh not as in fishing for fish but as in the fraudulent fishing company um yep. is the right thing to do because often they're in disadvantaged nations. It's a way for them to provide for their families. Uh, it's that or starve. So it's an ethical choice. They either do that or the family starves. So for them, it's better that they work for that, you know, that, that ethical choice to them. It might appear cut and dried to us. 
that it's not on, but to them, it's a way of stopping their loved ones go hungry, right? Yeah. I, th- I think I've always had a strong ethical compass of what I will and won't do um, that comes a little bit from, from Asperger's. Right, folks with Asperger's tend to be very. It's 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 either true or it's not. It's either yeah. false. Or it's true. It's right or it's wrong. Right, um, and I think that has set me in good stead, but also got me in a lot of trouble as well, because I don't think refusing to do that work when I was twenty two engendered me to that company. Right. No. And um, that's an interesting thing is that if something's challenging your code of ethics, is it okay to walk? And I would suggest if something is really against your code of ethics or your values, the ethical and right thing for you to do is to walk. Yeah. And that way you may, at least you maintain truth to yourself. Yeah, well, and it, but it also depends on whether, like, you might not walk from the whole company, but you might just walk from that particular situation. Yeah. Right, because it might not be a company ethics thing. It might be a specific situation ethics. Uh, for that particular company, I feel like um, it was it was the whole thing. I just didn't see it from where I was, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, that it, it wasn't, wasn't an unusual thing to happen. Um, but also it was the time, 2001, 2002, people didn't really necessarily understand, not everybody, especially if you weren't an IT person, right, didn't necessarily understand that, that, that ethical in the software space, because software has not really been around that long. I mean, it has been around, what, 70 or 80 years, right? Um, but everybody in the world needing to understand software and the choices and the implications is a relatively new thing. Well, um, having access to mass data, having concerns like privacy, like before, if you, if you wanted to growing up, I'm not sure whether this thing growing up in Australia, everybody had their name and phone number listed in the phone book. Yep. Because if you wanted to find someone, you went to the phone book, right? Yep. Whereas now you actively work to make sure that it is not in the phone book (laughs) and and register it with, in the UK, there's a telephone preference service where you can register it and make sure that your electoral roll, it's acknowledged so that finance companies know you're on the electoral roll, but no one else can find it out. Um, Yep. And it's interesting, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, they've been around since before the internet was a big thing. So mid-90s, the EFF have been fighting for trying to get balance on the internet and to maintain some fidelity. But, um, how do we maintain the signal so that it's greater than the noise? Yeah, I don't know is, is the answer. I see a lot of noise. Um, and especially on, on, on social media, right? Because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why that I think it's because people are hidden as well. People feel like they can be unethical when there's nobody there to judge them, that nobody knows who they are. Right. Uh, you've just triggered to me. You know how I think in memes and metaphors, right? Uh, two things popped up. The the, the classic XKCD. Uh, someone is wrong on the internet. Yep. <laughs> There's the the comic where you know, just look at that through your favorite search engine. It'll come up. It's like bang. XKCD. Someone's wrong on the internet. And it's like I'm just correcting. Somebody's wrong on the internet. Yes. Um, and uh, the other one is I think it was Mike Tyson who said it. Uh, social media created this space where people thought they could talk nonsense without getting a punch in the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're coming to somebody's face and you say something so horrendous that they could give you a punch in the face. 
So you, 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 you there was that built in reserve. What people say that that prevented you from 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 doing that to people's faces, but then on the internet where it's a free for all, and nobody knows who you are, and you can create a fake account. Um, it's it's very easy to say things with no ramifications whatsoever. So what do people say when there's no ramifications whatsoever? <laughs> yeah. This is the, what was it um, when Microsoft put the AI bot up a few years ago? It, it, it happened twice. So the first time they, 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 they built an AI bot, they connected it to Twitter, and within a few hours, the bot became misogynistic, racist, and aggressive, and they had to turn it off. Um, and then they tried again i think a couple of years later they they'd work been working on these filters for for a couple of years um and they tried it again and it took 24 hours this time to become racist misogynistic and aggressive it was it was it was threatening to come around and kill people um within 24 hours and it's a ai ai is not ai like it's, it's a funny thing to say but AI that we have is not like AI in the movies, right? AI in the movies is artificial intelligence. AI that we have just now is um, a, 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 an interpretive system. It's collecting all of the data that exists within a particular topic and then rationalizing that down to what are the patterns in that data and reproducing those patterns, right? So it's 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 a trained suggestion engine. It yeah, is not a, it's it's not a yeah, if if you suddenly think of Terminator and a self aware intelligent identity walking around doing stuff, or yeah, I'm this. I'm really old and and there was a great uh, BBC science fiction program called Blake Seven. And there was a super cool. Oh, time, yeah, yeah, my yeah. Mom, yeah. My mom talks about Blake Seven. Yeah, yeah. So go and look it up. It was brilliant. It was really well done. Um, but there was this supercomputer called ORAC, which was this uh, Perspex box with some lights in it. And it was self aware, right? It was fully intelligent. You know, Ziggy, and I... Ziggy from uh, Quantum Leap. I'll take your word for it. Missed that one. Okay. Uh, so, but yeah, yeah. The, but that's why it's, that. it's it's modeling, right? It's yeah, it's it, modeling. It, so it, if you plug it into Twitter, the AI will reflect the sentiment on Twitter. So it became a racist, horrible. misogynistic, horrible person, right? Because that's how people are at. There so the, are there are people who are being nice on Twitter, but the majority of stuff on Twitter is people being nasty to each other with no repercussions. Imagine it if they did it now when a lot of the checks and balances have been taken out of X as it is now known. Yeah, I, I and I think if uh, the thing I always think about, I, that's the moral and ethical part, right? Should they be taking those checks and balances out? The, 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 the part that I find more interesting is that humans also do some of what AI does. Current, current AI is not doing what humans do, but what AIs are doing, humans also do. We, we, we collect a bunch of information, we uh, uh, surf it for patterns, pull out the things that, patterns that we connect with, and then that becomes part of ourselves, which is why so we, which is, we lazy load, right? We lazy load and we generalize. Well, it's 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 ultimately why uh, uh, magically we're all we're always born into our religion, right? Like the, the 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 thing where the data we're absorbing as we're growing up is the thing that creates that that mental mindset that we're in. Therefore, we're 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 always in the perfect religion for us because that's the one we've been taught and it's the same thing if if, if you're engaging with um a bunch of uh, uh, nasty mean people you're going to start talking 
and acting in a nasty, mean way. Well, because... it's the, that tribal drive, right? And if we, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we we as humans have a desire to be part of a group. If we're surrounded in a group that are behaving in a poor way, how do we become self-aware that it's poor? And what do we do about the situation? So then this comes back to ethics being subjective, right? That the the what's what's one person's bad thing is another person's it's fine thing. Probably not 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 best words to use, but But there, there's some general trends of of what uh, really poor behavior is. And this is where I, you know, reflect on Asimov's laws, right? Yeah. Mo most people, I probably feel comfortable with that statement. Most people are physically upset when, are physically affected in a negative manner when they see another human or even another animal being subjected to some kind of pain, right? Yeah. Mo most people are, are, are upset with that. And even animal, you, you could see that in the animal kingdom with each other as well, right? They're, they're usually hunting to eat. They're not. Yeah. Gonna, they don't play know. with their food, right? Yeah. Um, well, except cats, but they're psychopaths. Um, yeah. Well, this, this is like cats and humans are the only ones that torture other things, right? Yeah. So that that there is inherent moral and ethical routine subroutines in humans that are triggered by by those things. That's probably part of how animals survive, right? Humanity survives is because. We have helped each other. What was the, 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 there was a, a lady, she was a, um, anthropologist and she was asked, I don't remember any of the names for this, but she was asked, um, what was the first indication that humans, when, when, when did humans become not animals, but, uh, 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 uh sentient? What was the first sign of sentience? And it was, a uh, uh, a repaired broken bone. Oh, tools. No. So this is this is this is. Oh, if, if, so yeah, I, this is when, when we actually leg. look after a weak person, right? So when we, we actually are looking after a weak person, uh, taking care of somebody till their their bone had healed and then they're able to be productive again, and that was her moment that 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 that's that's what they're looking for. When they look back in 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 history, um, for whether this group was sentient or not, right? So, um, I'd chance I wouldn't say sentient, but I'd say civilized. Well, I'm using the wrong words. Yeah, so I, I'd I'd say civilization. That that was the point. That yeah, yeah, that, yeah, the first sign of civilization. You're right. That's 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 exactly the phrase that I that I was trying to get to, but couldn't. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Um, so really, if we're thinking about it, it's basically that first law of uh, Asimov's, which is um, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Yeah. So basically, if we use that as the ultimate imperator, that is the ethical boundary. But then immediately we're hit with the escape clause of what if you're in defense of your realm? And that is where the military come into play because they're sure but they're you know that's that's the in extremist that's the straw man argument right but day to day most of us don't have to go around and maim or injure or no not until the not apocalypse comes through we'll be fine not so okay we're all good till the zombie apocalypse yeah cool it so to be it just has to be any form of apocalypse right yeah you know, so um well, we found out through COVID in the UK that the first consequence of apocalypse is we run out of toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. Second consequence is I back can't buy a webcam. That was the second consequence of 
of COVID. Yeah, yeah. I can't buy a chip because uh, for my graphics card because everyone's crypto mining. <laughs> Everybody's crypto mining from home. Yeah, I think I think that 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 core moral and ethical code, although for some people it appears to be broken, right? But in general, for that core, maybe some people have overridden it. They still have it, but they've overridden it. Yeah. Um, and some people definitely don't have it. That's for sure. There's, there's a cycle. Yeah, but that, the, that is they are fundamentally statistically, statistically yeah. a very, yeah. it's, it's an extreme outlier. They're beyond the three standard deviations. They're the, you know, serial killers get a lot of publicity because they're so rare, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, 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 beyond that, people, humans have an inbuilt, moral and ethical compass which means that if 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 somebody and this is why you get whistleblowers right people people are making are making decisions that go against their moral and ethical and it's learned or imposed behavior yeah that's so, overriding their inbuilt and it's that ethical. sense of do no harm right and I think that's the essence of the first law is we do no harm. We don't make the situation worse for others. Now, yeah. occasionally we will be in a system where that whole system is built to take advantage. And at, at what point is the checkout, you know, because ultimately social systems require some transactions some people are going to come off better some are going to come off worse at what point do you check out of the system yeah but also at, at at what point do do the rules imposed upon people the system that's created right um, impose unreasonable constraints. So we we create. Uh, there's two forms of this, right? One it one is obvious. It's it's the law, right? We create systems to impose, and I'm using impose loosely, mm -hmm. threat of punishment, right? So it's an, an imposition to impose certain behaviors. Yeah, yeah. On societal norm, right? So, but when, yeah, when depending upon your country, that there's different policing models to be very philosophical about it. And, you know, in a lot of the Western world, it's policing by consent, um, where they, they're just a reminder. Some of them. Um, are still <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Rat hole. <laughs> rat hole, rat hole. Yeah, 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 rat hole. Police by consent versus police by enforcement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> so there's some, some social laws or boundaries they could be laws they could be some social mores or behavior codes yeah um, that's the way our tribe rolls um that, that's like my my mvp code of conduct or the bcs yep. code of conduct or the scrum.org code of conduct these are all um um they're not expected i think the the, the core thing with those those types of things those codes of conduct is that they're not expected to be broken, right? Yeah, they're, it's like the doctor's it, Hippocratic it, Oath, right? Just be the default. Even if we didn't ask you anything, even if we didn't tell you about it, we don't expect you to do any of those things. Yeah, it's like is is table stakes. Don't be a dick. Yeah, because I I I, re, I I read a lot of these codes of conduct, and I'm like, yeah, why would anybody do those things? just seems like a no-brainer that 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 you wouldn't you wouldn't do those things but you know some of them some of them are a little bit more strict than others right mm -hmm. um especially when you that oh well that's probably a rat hole as well imposed um how, how to, what's the word imposed speech right or imposed uh, uh, ideas that you're you're. It's not necessarily a, 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 a that core thing, but you're kind of forced to do that thing, 
there's there's a few things like that I've seen in codes of conduct um, that that maybe are starting to get to that edge of that moral and ethical. Is it ethical to to impose thought on? I'm using air quotes for thought, but impose thought on 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 other people. But um, I guess pendulums, right, swing in lots of different ways. But well, I think there's boundaries, right? And otherwise, we're going to go off on another segue and start talking about the world of Brave New World, uh, 1984, <laughs> Newspeak. You know, the imposed thought. And I couldn't help it, but this is the way my weird brain works and, you know, to, 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 to random connections firing off. As soon as you said policing by consent, policing by order, you know, good police, straight in my head, Judge Dredd walks in. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, that, and that, that's, that's, that's that ultimate, ultimate policing by enforcement, right? Yeah. That, that you have some kind of societal, uh, this is the whole side topic but you have some kind of societal thing that changes which in the judge dread universe it's it's mass it's mass unemployment because mechanisms are taking over all of the jobs yep. so there are no jobs for people so if everybody's sitting around not doing anything um you end up with listless behaviors right because people have no outlet for what i want to do uh, and then things can very quickly get out of control, and you, then you need stronger enforcement of the rules, right? That's which ties into another fantasy universe because all the judges are clones. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right. So um, just reel us back towards so ethics and agility. So we've we've had a, a wide rambling discussion. There have been evidence of corporations behaving unethically. There is clear evidence of people behaving unethically, some of it illegally, some of it just not very nice. Yep. Uh, some of it alleged, some of it demonstrated. Yep. Uh, agility in its core, when we look at the manifesto for agile software development, there is an implied ethics in it, but you can be agile yeah. and apply it in an unethical fashion, for instance, um, fraudulent industries such as skimming, phishing, scams like that. Um, well, there might even be perfectly legal industries that a certain group of individuals believe is unethical, right? And that's contextual and up to for debate, and that's why laws change, you know. So, um, and that's that's fine. That's the whole point of the legal systems is to uphold. Well, it should be for the betterment of the the society and what have you. Without jumping into that uh, mess, we not touching that. Um, so then we thought about that and flipped it on its head and said, "Well, is it okay for somebody to work in one of those industries if it saves their family?" And yeah. in that instance, it may be ethical for them to behave like that. We then sort of made a segue into personal ethics. What does it mean to be a civilization? And we thought about when we as a civilization look after the less fortunate, we become civilized. Um, yep. And you said that the the anthropologist, we're sorry, we've forgotten the name, um, defined the point of civilization as when the society became comfortable and capable of looking after an individual with a broken leg. And that meant that they were willing to expend the resources to look after that person for their uh, healing and up until they could then become a productive member of the group again. So that this, a civil society will look after people, which will imply an ethical boundary. We then explored professional organizations and their guides to code of conduct and we're then inviting you, wonderful listener, to think about well, what's your what's your values, what's your ethics, what's your boundaries. Yeah, and and to, and to consider how your ethics, your boundaries, apply to what you're actually doing every day, and what are you doing in your organisations? Who are you working for? What are they doing? And does that fit within 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 your ethical boundaries? What are you being asked to do? Um, and I, I would again tie tie that back to that idea 
of of the squirrel burger that you mentioned, right? Um, of asking asking people to say and do things that they're not capable of saying and doing, if that makes sense. So not, it, ask, asking people to commit to something that's impossible for them to deliver. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is a really important thing for agility. Well, professional agility um, for the professional Kanban, professional scrum that we teach making sure that you have time and space to reflect so that you have the capacity to observe yourself and to make sure that you're honoring your code of ethics. Uh, if you're practicing in both of those, either of those, uh, being able to use the force of the scrum values, focus, openness, respect, courage, and commitment, do no harm, do good, um, be a, be a positive influence on society in general. And then what's, what's a step? So interesting, say you suddenly realize you're in a bit of a dilemma and you're in a bit of a, a moral maze. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend for someone if they suddenly realize they come to the epiphany that perhaps something they're doing is not quite good? Wow. Yeah. What to do? Um, depends on what it is right it depends on where what 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 line is it that you feel that you're crossing um perhaps 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 you need to walk into your local police station right that could be an extreme case of of i i need to i need to do something i need to raise raise this um but perhaps it's just uh like I was asked to do one ethical, unethical thing out of a bunch of things that I was doing and I just refused to do the things that I didn't think were, were ethical and voiced that I felt that they were unethical, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that could be enough for the person suggesting it to go, oh, oh, actually, you're right. That's probably not a good idea, right? Sometimes people do things unethically because they don't realize or they haven't thought through or or whatever we all have dumb ideas right um people jump yeah. off roofs onto trampolines right people have people have uh, uh dumb ideas so perhaps just chatting about it with a friend see what somebody else thinks do two people think it's unethical or is it just one so right? that that very practical first step is have a chat to someone and just validate yeah <laughs> valid validate whether it is or it isn't before you go to the police station, just check with someone else before you and, go there. Yeah, and you, you you probably you you can probably assume that it's unethical if you're if if you're asked to it in the phrase of "Don't tell anybody else," but right, I want you to do this thing. That's probably a good indication that there's something fishy going on. Yeah. So, check with someone else. Give yourself time and space to think about stuff. Build your own set of values. Uh, if in doubt, use the scrum values until you build your own. Yep. Double check that your organization's values are aligned with yours and that you're working in an industry that you support and can comfortable live with. Um, and just be be mindful right it, it always be considering the eth ethical ramifications of what it is you're doing and are you are you still on the right path are you still doing the right thing are you still um able people to live with yourself for, for the things that you're doing or are you going to be up all night worrying about making choices that you've made right and this is an important point is that the, I think it was the engineer who wrote the code for the VW masking of emissions. Yes. That's my favorite, favorite one. They and the manager both went to prison, right? Yep. 
the first he was the first person so I, i'm gonna caveat that one a little bit simon um he was the first person to go to prison but he was also the lowest level person to go to prison so probably had the cheapest lawyers right so there's that as well <laughs> <laughs> You're not telling me that um, there's a two-tier system in society where rich people get away with stuff because they can pay for better lawyers, afford, are you? You can afford more expensive uh, uh, lawyers, then you have a greater chance of not being punished, right? I mean, that's just uh, a little bit of reality there that really shouldn't be there, but it is. Um, the the quality-wise, right? Quality of the service. Um, but yeah, the, the the person who wrote the the lead developer who wrote the code um, for for Volkswagen in the diesel scandal was the first person who went to prison. We we as software engineers have a moral and ethical responsibility to do the right thing. And I didn't know is not a defence for a moral and ethical ramification. Yeah. Nor is I was just following instructions or orders. Yeah, I was just following orders is not a defense uh, for doing something morally and ethically wrong. And you know it's wrong if someone's going to get hurt. And if you have to ask that question, is it morally and ethically wrong? Probably, probably when I want to consider it, right? So I just need to caveat that thing about someone's going to get hurt. There are certain industries that that's what you're doing. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are certain industries where 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 that's 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 the outcome. Yeah. Ultimately, it's up to you, and make the world a better place. Right? It's in your yep. gift. So yep. you can be agile. You can be ethical. Do no harm. Ethics. There is an overlap. Uh, we need to be ethical regardless of our process. And we wish you every success with your businesses and look forward to hearing our next discussion on Agile, actually. And if you have any interesting ethical quandaries that you can share. Oh, yeah. And we'd link. Be hearing about them. Yeah. Share us your ideas. Share us your feedback. Link, like, subscribe, all that cool stuff. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Martin.